What's up guys, Dark Deli here, and today we're doing some Kerbal Space Program, and I'm working on the design for my Mach 5 jet. Yes, this jet does go Mach 5, not in its current state. If I'm showing it on screen right now, not in its current state. I tried and messed around with this thing. I, I tuned this thing a lot. It was a lot of tuning, like, like seriously, like a couple hundred miles an hour at a time to get it up to this point. Now, I want to put a disclaimer. Uh, a, I'm new at the game. I'm very new at KSP. B, this is total vanilla with no mods. And C, this is jet powered. There's no rocket engines anywhere. It's a single jet engine, not that that matters, but it's only jet powered. There's no rockets on this anywhere. Only jet power, so only just pure atmospheric engine. I say that because I see a lot of people making fast planes, but they put jet, um, they put rocket engines on them. To me, that's cheating. We're, we're using pure, like, you know, naturally oxygen aspirated engine here. All right, that's what makes it a challenge. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a challenge. All right, what you're seeing right now is a failure because my nose cone is overheating. Even though I put like heat shrouds over it here, this is where I'm trying to fix the nose cone problem. The nose cone is always the first thing to heat up. And you can see I'm teetering around uh, between 1400 and 1500 meters a second. Every time you move the, the, the attitude of the plane, it's gonna, it's gonna slow you down. I'm, and I'm, I'm, trying to move, I'm trying to move the plane here and swerve it a little bit just to kind of roll the heat off the nose cone. But ultimately, is it, it is the nose cone that is the, uh, it's the weakest link in the chain, you know? It's the first thing to go fail and go bam is the nose cone because it's the thing taking all the heat. I find a way around that. that and this is not the plane that gets Mach 5. You're about to see the plane that gets to Mach 5 and how I do it. See right there, you see, you can see I've angled down. I've taken some heat off the nose cone. We also lost a lot of speed. We're gaining speed back really fast, but we're also losing altitude. You guys know about physics. If you play this game, I, I assume the average person went to high school, so you, you know how physics work. Um, the plane is going to tend to, okay, so here we are. Here I'm trying to fix my nose cone problem. I'll just talk kind of through this bit. Uh, I'm like, yeah, this heat shielding was ridiculous. Let's take it all off. And I come up with a good solution to fix the nose cone and keep it from overheating. Um, it still does blow, but it, I intend it to blow, and I'll get to that. The thing with changing the attitude of the craft, you're getting speed really, really fast, but you're not, but you're on a, a, a bad course, so you change it and you slow down. It doesn't matter if you... Um, what I do with this plane, the, the way I get it to go as fast as I do is I do like a roller coaster maneuver. I'm just talking over a while. Right here in the video, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to modify the nose cone. I'm like, how do I modify this thing to go to, to sustain superheat? And I do figure it out. While I'm doing that, I'm going to talk to you guys. You can go way up into the stratosphere. Like, I, I've gotten this thing in low Earth orbit. I've gotten this thing in low orbit, like, you know, 30K altitude where, yeah, I'm just floating in space. And you would think if you nosedive from there, you could get the fastest speed, right? I mean, like... Normal logic would say, well, what if you just nosedive from outer space? Of course, that doesn't work because air resistance, that's what thats what heats up the whole of the craft so much. It's air resistance. Um, it's the same with climbing straight up. Climbing straight up can actually give you a really huge boost in speed because as you go up, the density of the air decreases, which allows the plane to move faster. But as the density of the air decreases, so too does the air. Exactly. The air that's combusting in the jet engines. Again, I'm assuming you guys know a bit about physics. You can see me on the screen right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of going herder, trying to figure out what I'm trying to do right here is I decided to put a double nose cone on this thing, which ends up working great. Now, okay, so we, we've gone through the basics of physics. Uh, the best way to get speed out of an aircraft is, like I said, I, I, I call it the roller coaster maneuver. Slowly up, slowly down, up, down, up, down, like a snake. Just kind of moving it. As you move it, it sheds the heat off some parts gives heat to other parts, it kind of moves it around and you don't lose as much, you don't shave as much speed off doing slow roller coaster maneuvers. So often I'll start up really high altitude and then kind of snake my way down. I'll get as much speed as I can down below, go up until the atmosphere starts getting a little bit too thin, then come back down and like snake it. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to stack two nose cones on top of one another. And I'll tell you the reason why. The reason why is because the nose cone was the first thing to break off. And I'll talk about the engine too here in a second. What I do here actually is successful. What I'm doing here, I have the inner nose cone, which is actually an intake. It's, it works as a secondary intake for the engine because the entire fuselage of this craft, it's a short little tiny craft. I'll talk about that in a second. It's all one fuel tank. So that little nose cone off to the side is actually, um, 
that's gonna know that's designed to be the inner cone for the craft this one i'm placing right now is a shell that's going to overheat and it's going to snap off once that snaps off this right here the uh that's the air intake and that'll be there and of course i'm talking over a pre-recorded video when the front snaps off and that one takes over it doesn't even hitch in speed it doesn't lose a single mile an hour it keeps accelerating it was actually pure genius now why am i using such a small plane with just one tiny engine wouldn't it go faster if it was huge and had a billion engines well the thing is no not really because you add more mass you have to have more uh propulsion to move that mass now okay one thing i want to talk about right here here i'm taking off this thing has like no lift the only lift generated by this thing is the rear control surfaces it takes forever to get it off the runway and it's kind of rocky now once this thing hits about mach 1 this thing is like a butterfly na nailed to a freaking piece of plywood yeah once this thing gets up in the air and starts moving at about mach 1 which is right up here in about five seconds there we are that's about mach 1 right there this thing is now bam and it won't budge now it's stable it just it's hard to get it off the ground all right so here we are now here i'm trying to gain as much okay this is my mach 5 run i'm just talking to you guys through it <clears throat> i'm just watching the video along with you guys talking to you guys through it i'm trying to get as much speed with as i'm trying to stay in the thickest air i can and get as much speed as i can i know that at this altitude with this air density look at my atmosphere up there at the top oh yeah i'm having uh, I mean, i'll have a running speedometer for you guys so you can see it without having to look at everything all right see i'm trying to keep as much atmosphere as i can low altitude as I can I'm gonna shave all this off though I'm just trying to get some momentum before I go up now as soon as I go up I'm gonna lose like one-third of my speed I'm just gonna go up so I can do a nice angle dive but I'm gonna try to keep it in the atmosphere you can see right there my, the heat bar on my nose cone just started heating up the nose cone's gonna blow it will it does in this video the nose cone blows off and it I, I was very proud of this you can also see my engines overheating because I have the plane slightly angled up there's a lot of hot air going under the engine. Um, the engine does ultimately fail in this. That's why I only hit Mach 5. Now, again, I'm using the vanilla game. No mods. Just jet engines. What just blew off there? That's actually a good question. Something just blew off the... Oh, that was the nose cone. My bad. I was not looking at the screen. I missed it. So right there, the nose cone blew off. See, you don't even notice it. That was genius. That was pure genius. And now um, it didn't even... It didn't miss a beat. Okay. Um, we're angling up 15, 13. See, we're still over 1,500 meters a second, but this new nose cone is heating up a lot. We're going to angle it down. We're shaving off a lot of speed. You, you got to sacrifice speed when you do this. Yeah, I'm all, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm watching a billion things. I'm watching the video back, and something blew off. I was like, oh, what flew off? I was like, oh, yeah, that was the nose cone. I just said it was going to blow off. Trust me, I've flown this thing a billion times. I've lost wings off it before. It was like, what was that? Oh, it was a wing. No big deal. But this thing the point of this is that it can take off and it can land it has retractable landing gear and wings and lift it can take off and land here we go guys 1580 1590 there's 1600 meters a second we're hitting about uh we're gonna hit 30 100 miles an hour i had to adjust the attitude i just had to i had i had to pitch it up a little bit so we got to catch that speed back up and here we go 1630 40 50 60 this is the fastest i've ever had a naturally aspirated jet engine right here 16 90 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and bam all right so that's 1700 meters a second that's 3800 miles an hour that's mach 5 and i've tested it with this jet a lot guys i, I thank you for watching thank you for sticking around for this whole video while i ramble about uh physics and uh aerodyn aerodynamic stuff i may or may not know about but I, I've, I've run several tests on this plane and other planes like it. Here, I'll show some other planes. I, I'm sure I can stir up some pics of other planes that were precursors to this. I've tried multiple engines, lots of engines. I've even tried rocket assist. Just I, I've cheated with rocket assist. It never really helped. Um, simple aerodynamics and things like that it has been the limiter. And on this one, I cheated a little bit because I had a double nose cone. The front nose cone blew off, and it gave me another air intake. What kind of engine was I running? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't address that. I was running a ramjet with like a pre-cooler and then like the cool intake that compressed the air before it. I was running um, two fuel tanks. Well, I was running the command pod, which is itself a fuel tank. I mean, it has some fuel in it, right? Uh, behind that, the fuselage is a fuel tank. And then I had two more stages behind that, the intake, the pre-cooler, and then the ramjet. 
to keep everything as cool as I, co I could back there. Still, ultimately, at Mach 5, the uh, engine finally blew. But I think, again, you know, unmodded vanilla um, KSP, I don't think you're going to get faster than that. That's the smallest plane. I mean, that thing can barely f even get off the runway. I don't think you guys are going to beat that. All right, guys, that's my personal airspeed record. If you guys have something better with only, you know, oxygen-aspirated jet engines, atmospheric engines, by all means, let me know. No cheating, no rockets. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm Dark Dally. I will catch you guys next time.